For those starting out on their laser journey, this video will get you off on the right foot by giving you a high level overview of Lightburn and the tools available to you. From setting up your USB connected laser, using a few common tools, and finally cutting out a keychain as your first project. We will be building off of this in future videos and we'll also have links in the description for more info. The first time you open Lightburn, you will need to create a profile for your laser. Ensure that your laser is powered on and plugged into your computer over USB. Choose Find My Laser. This will scan for your connected machine and import settings from the laser. Many lasers will require a driver, so if your laser is not detected, you may need to get that from the manufacturer. We have videos on the setup of some of these lasers in our playlist linked below. Enter a name for your laser, and if your machine has limit switches, enable Auto Home Laser on Startup. Click Finish to finalize device creation and OK to close out of the device window. In the laser window on the right side, we can see our laser status shows connected and the laser is ready. Lightburn uses a combination of windows, tabs, and toolbars for its various tools and functions. Many of these can easily be moved or reordered to what works best for you. If something goes missing or you don't like a change you made, open the window menu and click reset to default layout, and that will put everything back in its original place. In the left toolbar, we have a few tools that can be used to create shapes. For our keychain, select the rectangle tool, then click in your workspace and drag to create your first shape. With our rectangle placed, click the escape key on your keyboard once to switch to the selection tool. With this, we can click and drag the handles around our shape to resize it, or click and drag the center handle to move the shape in our workspace. The width and height text box in the top toolbar will show the shape's current size, and you can set specific values from there as well. For my keychain, I went with a width of 100 millimeters and a height of 50 millimeters. Our keychain needs a hole for the key ring. For this, select the ellipse tool beneath the rectangle tool. While holding down the shift key, click and drag in your workspace to create a circle. Holding the shift key will ensure it is a perfect circle. Just like with the rectangle, we can use the handles to resize our circle. Five millimeters in size should be plenty for most key rings. Drag the circle to any of the corners of the rectangle, leaving a gap roughly the size of your circle from the edge. You may have noticed after placing your rectangle that a layer appeared in the cuts and layers window. Any design created or placed in your workspace will have a color layer assigned to it that tells Lightburn what you would like done with that layer. Currently, it is telling us that our design is on the black color layer in fill mode with a speed of 30,000 millimeters per minute and a power of 30%. We can assign any color to our design using the color palette in the bottom toolbar. This will come in very handy for complex projects. Fill mode will completely fill in any closed shape on this layer. If we go up to the preview button in the top toolbar, we can see a simulation of the current settings. We do not want our keychain filled in and instead we want it cut out. To change this, click on the mode dropdown and select line. Back in the preview window, we can see that our rectangle and circle are outlined, which is exactly what we want. As for the speed and power, this will be unique to each laser and the material you are using. Many manufacturers will provide a table of recommended settings, which is a great place to start. In later videos, we will show you how to use Lightburn's test tools to help find the best settings for your projects. I am using the 10 watt Ortur Laser Master 3 diode laser with 5 mm thick wood, and a speed of 300 mm per minute with a power of 100% is recommended. We can change the speed and power settings using the quick settings boxes in the bottom of the cuts and layers window. All that our keychain is missing is some text. Click on the A icon in the left toolbar to activate the text tool and click in the keychain to place the text cursor. Here you can type anything you would like on your keychain. I went with first laser project, but feel free to be as creative as you would like. The top toolbar will give you lots of options to customize the font, size, and spacing of your text. The main consideration is that the text fits inside of the rectangle. Currently our text is on the same layer as our keychain body, meaning it will be cut out, but we want the text to be engraved. With the text selected, pick any other color in the color palette to assign the text to that layer. For our text, we will change the mode to fill. For the speed and power, Orta recommends 15,000 millimeters per minute and a power of 100% for basswood engraving, so I will start there. The default settings in Lightburn will run each layer in the cuts and layers window from top to bottom. 
Generally, you want the outermost cut to be last to prevent your parts from shifting around. So we will click and drag our fill layer on top of our cut layer. Back in the preview window, we see our text is engraved first, followed by our keychain being cut out, which is perfect. You should always check the preview window before running a job to make sure that the expected output matches what you are seeing. We don't want to be wasting material if we can avoid it. On the laser, place your material down and set the correct focal distance from the laser to the top of your material. In Lightburn, we will be using the absolute coordinates mode for this project. Click on the frame button in the laser window to have the laser travel the bounds of where it will be running your keychain job. Once you verify that the material is underneath the laser for the entire framing, click start to begin running the job. The entire job should be no more than a couple of minutes, and if all goes well, you will have successfully engraved and cut out a keychain. If the material did not cut through completely, or the engraving is too light or too dark, you can adjust the speed and power settings, then rerun the job until you're happy with the results. This is a big first step in your laser journey. You should now have a general understanding of the workflow in Lightburn. We will be covering the topics outlined in this video in much further detail in future videos. If you have not already, be sure to join the Lightburn forums to ask questions and get help. Links to documentation on topics covered will be in the description down below. And be sure to subscribe for more great videos on mastering Lightburn.